Will this be the run where we master the Conjure Blade? Ooh, 250 gold star, huh? As usual, we're trying to work towards our Slay the Spire Mastery Challenge. That means that each different card in the game must be mastered by defeating the Corrupt Heart, having two or more of that card in the deck. That is the Spire Mastery Challenge, and I have to do it for every single card. All the rares, all the colorless cards, and even all the curses. It's quite a challenge, really. I see that we can hit a shop right away, which makes a gold start pretty dang appealing. Uh, we can also fight as many as four elites here. One, two, three, four. Although maybe more reasonable to go three elites, something like this. Lots of rest sites as well to get upgrades. And we're always happy to see uh, Slime Boss at the end of the act as Watcher. I think Slime Boss is this character's easiest matchup by far. Is there a card I'm surprised to see in the last 25? I think we still haven't done Master of Strategy, and that continues to be my How Have I Not Mastered This Yet card. It's even got Master in the name, after all. Let's see, anything we could do with any of the, any of the other starting bonuses? I don't really think so. I think 250 gold here is exceptional. If I'm going to this shop, I don't necessarily need to go to this store, although going to two shops is not a bad idea. We could reasonably remove two defend cards, which Watcher is very much grateful for, as well as looking at more relics in total before deciding what to buy. Would I grab money for a curse in that one event between the two shops? Depends on the exact deal. If it's Serpent offering me doubt for 150, then maybe. If it's the Gold Shrine for 225, then definitely. Definitely. We could even go to a third shop if we really wanted to. But I'd, I'd be more than happy to play with one fewer removal and one more relic, for example. How's it going, 60 Cent? Why do you only get two options at the beginning of a run most of the time? In order to get four options from the Niao, you must at least face the first boss on your prior run with that character. So you are presented with two options when you either abandon your run or you perish before getting to the first boss. The two options that you get aren't bad, mind you. Enemies in your next three combats have one health and a small max HP up will be the only two choices if you fail to meet the condition. And those are both perfectly viable starts. They're not amazing, but they can be totally fine to get your foot in the door on a run. Raging Weasel says, I've been struggling on the Watcher lately. What are some ways that you can improve your mid to late game success? Late game for Watcher is a twofold question for me. One, how are you scaling your attack damage? Do you have a relic that can improve your attacks? Um, can you get Wrath and Vulnerable on enemies? Can you get into Divinity Stance? These are, these are different questions you can ask yourself for being damage prepared on the Watcher. Um, but Watcher has more trouble staying alive in the late game, and for that you're going to want a block engine of some kind. Some of the easier ways to get there with Watcher are to spam Talk to the Hand on a foe, or to stack Mental Fortress buffs, but you can also get there with upgraded defense cards and some dexterity. Deceive Reality, Halt, Sanctity, these can all work pretty well. Are there any cards I don't think I'll ever master? The goal of the challenge is to master all 352 cards in the game. There are a couple cards we excluded from the challenge because they're impossible to master, like the Pride Curse and all the status cards, Wound, Burn, Slimed, Dazed, Void. Those can't be mastered either. Nor can we master temporarily created cards that aren't directly ad added to the deck, like Shiv, Insight, Miracle, Safety, dis um, Smite, these are also cards we can't master. So I guess those are all cards I'll never master. Omega, Beta. Rakan says, in my last successful Watcher run, the defense was one Mental Fortress in an infinite stance shifting deck. That's right. If you can shift your stance back and forth between Calm and Wrath enough times, then you can block anything. I do think we want to go to two shops. I've decided. I've decided. Wallop plus Divinity. That'll work pretty well. We have not mastered our pride, it's true. So do I strike and take two? Do I defend and take zero? Or do I both with the miracle here? I think next turn I'd like to be able to play Eruption in two strikes, so we should keep the miracle for that. 
How much damage is that? That would be 33. So that won't make a difference. Let's just block that. We're getting attacked. Could do Vigilance Miracle Eruption here, or we can simply go Vigilance Strike. Try to redraw into Eruption. Let's try that. Also now Strike one more time. Eh, slight Punish. Once more around then. This is where having a Defend removed can really, really help on the Watcher. We actually could take damage here. Uh, yeah, we do. Just a little bit more. Next turn we kill with Eruption Strike Strike. Feels like we probably had a slightly better line through this fight. I think if I went Eruption on the 7 attack turn and just took 2 damage there, we could have saved 2 health overall. But that's not too important. What's more important is getting a good potion from the first combat and being offered decent attack cards early on, and I think both Conclude and Cutthroat Fate are very good first picks. Cutthroat Fate in particular is spectacular. You get to look at the top two cards of your draw pile before you draw, and you can discard them. So you, you essentially get to look at the top two cards of the draw pile. If you want, you can draw either of them, and if you don't want either of them, you can discard them and try for a third card. That's very powerful. You can choose one of three cards to draw, essentially. Either top card, second card, or third card. Although you don't always know what all of them are. DJ Banner with the Baker's Dozen, thanks for 13 months. Concludes also very good early on, but kind of falls off later on when the end your turn effect becomes a bit of a burden. Whereas the Cutthroat Fate is useful for the whole run, so I really like it. Yes, yeah, so you can definitely farm hallways with a uh, with a Conclude. That's true. But what about with a Kunai? What about with a Consecrate? Hmm, Kunai, huh? Calibre, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. I could also say that this isn't good enough. Hmm. Now that I think about it, you know what I really like, actually, is Consecrate, Cut Through Fate, Carter Move. I could maybe think about buying Rush Down. This card's pretty strong, usually. It's not that good right now, but Watcher Runs can almost always find a use for Rush Down. So I'm contemplating not buying any Relic here. If I do want to go to that second shop, and I think I do, then we should save some of our money here. Could buy Dramatic Entrance for exactly a hundo? I don't think so. Let's lose one Defend. And yeah, keep over 200 for the next shop. Let's do that. Okay. That Burning Elite's already, like, very, very much in trouble. <laughs> Dang it, Faley. Called it! So I said this was a maybe, and that's still where I'm at. So looking at shop prices, if we take the curse, it means we can afford an uncommon relic in the shop, which we won't be able to do otherwise. We'll also be able to afford a rare, although if I buy a rare, I won't be able to remove the card. Actually, as it is, I can't, are we at 150, right? 350? Yeah, we can remove the card and buy an uncommon relic with this money. Okay. I think that improves our options sufficiently that I will take this curse. This will all be worth it. Serpent rears its head and blasts a stream of gold upwards. It is amazing and terrifying simultaneously. You gather all the gold... Thank the snake, thank you snake, and get going. Hmm. Cut through fate. Goes where? If I draw eruption or consecrate, I don't want to have hit the front one. It's a very small chance I don't get a damage card. Okay, yeah, cut through fate here. Give me the other cut through fate. Now use this here. Draw consecrate. Blap. Blap. And this is 12 damage. Easy peasy. Hmm. 
Hmm, fasting, huh? Fasting gives us strength and dexterity, but lowers our energy gain every turn. I like fasting a lot in decks that have zero cost cards, like Consecrate. Might buy this. Or, not buy this, uh, pick this. Deceive Reality is also pretty good. Gives us immediate block and puts the safety into hand. I like to think of this as two cost block 16, which is a very good deal. Let's take Fasting. I haven't done that one in a while. So we only get two energy per turn. Can also just go Eruption Strike here. That seems like the smarter deal. Skip the fasting in this fight. Be Pilgrim, thanks for the five months. Much appreciated. Got a stance potion, another pretty good potion. And there we go, some zero cost cards. Both Prostrate and Consecrate are excellent alongside of fasting. And I think given that we already have two Cutthroat Fates and a Consecrate, I might take Prostrate. Really like getting a uh, mantra going too. Let's take prostrate. Zero cost block and gives us mantra. I get ten mantra and we go divine. Let's see. Oh my! Options, options, options galore. Pretty interesting relics here. Lantern would give energy turn one. With Orrery, we can look at a bunch of cards right now. Or with Toxic Egg, we can get all future skills upgraded. We can even do Toxic Egg card remove. Toxic Egg is something you have to be careful when purchasing in particular. You're trading a lot of immediate value, the money, for something actually kind of nebulous. Upgrades in future picked skills. This doesn't help us at all right now. Uh, that said, I think we're completely fine going into the Burning Elite as we are, as long as we remove the doubt. So this is a pretty reasonable Toxic Egg purchase. We could buy Hand of Greed to make a ton of money off of. Hand of Greed on this character slaps pretty hard, although it's a bit awkward with the Fasting. I do like the Orrery to find cards that are good with the Fasting. But I really like this Toxic Egg, too. I think we can get away with this Toxic Egg. We're already quite strong because we purchased that cut through fate earlier. So let's remove the doubt and buy the egg. Thanks, Snake. Wouldn't have been able to do that without the Snake's help, so I feel good about it. Would Sneko I be good with fasting? I wouldn't say so. Let's see here. We should use one of our potions against this Kremlin knob has rolled pretty low health, by the way. We can either Stance Potion for Wrath right away, or we can Vuln Potion. Could do both, which feels like overkill. I don't think we need to do both. The Vuln Potion feels the most reasonable. That way we're doing triple damage once we see the Eruption. Let's use the Vuln Potion. Keep the Stance Potion for later. Hopefully we can find the eruption now. Looks like I'll take the Vigilance instead, maybe. Well. Let's see, if I were to draw eruption, let me just do some quick math. That'd be nine, uh, no, 13 plus 21 plus 18. So yes, I still kill if we draw a Eruption off of this. Consecrate. So this can guarantee draw a Eruption. I can do Cut Through Fate, Eruption, Consecrate, Miracle Strike. How much damage is that? That would be 10 plus 13, plus 15, plus 18. 56, yes, that kills. Okay, so we kill. Nice and clean. And we get a dead branch. 
First two relics, Dead Branch, Toxic Egg. This is going to be a weird run. Dead Branch says, whenever we exhaust a card, add a random card to our hand. Definitely one of the most powerful relics in the game. And look at this, an upgraded zero cost skill that it says exhaust on it. Yeah. Don't even need to really read the other text here. Just zero cost, says plus, says exhaust, click on it. For those reasons alone. The fact that it generates a zero cost attack is going to be even better to go with the fasting. But, oh heck yes, we're off to a great start here. Do we want a Master Reality? With Dead Branch, Master Reality is exceptional. One of the few situations where that card is really, truly good. Our second relic is a boat thingy. 14 block on turn two, or third relic more accurately. We're off to a really good start here. And don't forget, we have two more elites this act. Here goes. I don't want rest sites anymore. Yeah, we want to upgrade that fasting for sure. Yeah, what a start to a run, eh? Crazy. Just crazy. I think this is the upgrade. It's a lot of options for what to upgrade, actually. Hello. Uh, let's see what this makes. Mind Blast. Actually, Finisher is even stronger, yeah? It is. Oh, you're so dead, mate. Get obliterated. Get them both on turn one here. Easy. 12 times 5. Blah. So normally that's a very, very difficult fight in Act 1. Um, but not, not for me. Halt, exceedingly good with fasting. Zero cost block, way more block if you're in wrath if you're in wrath stance. Note that halt adds your dexterity value to both of these numbers. So if you're in wrath, halt gains double your dexterity as a bonus. So plus eight block on a zero cost card. Yes, please. We'd like to wake up this turn because we have free block next turn. It's not playing Vigilance, I guess. Although I'd also like to put the Fasting in play, huh? Hmm. All right, I'll wait. Ooh. Hello. Miracle to pray here. I don't think that's a good idea. Although that could mean going divine later in this fight. Also gives me an insight for next turn. I have less options for draw. Actually, you know what? I will. Getting to five mantra here seems kind of important. Oh, and you're asleep again. Oh my. Actually, don't think I realized that. That's an even bigger deal. Uh, you wake up this turn, so we might as well attack here. Um. <laughs> um. And then uh, this happens. Blap. Take 102 damage to the face, and you're gone, friend. Easy. Talk to the Hand is here, another Cut Through Fate is here, and Brilliance is here. Hmm. Talk to the Hand's pretty okay, although we don't need it that much. We have already got really good block. Brilliance can scale in damage. Katamari with the 28 months, thanks for that Prime sub. Take another Cut Through Fate. Can never have too many of those. Though Talk to the Hand does say Exhaust. You're not wrong about that. We find a second Prostrate. We're in, uh, we're in business here. Guess I'll just use the Fear Potion turn one against Gremlin Knob again. Happened last time. Should be fine here too. Easy peasy. Let's use this now. Oh. <laughs> Omni's Fasting. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't omniscience fasting, that's a terrible idea. Let's do this one. Doom and gloom. 
No, Dropkick. Dropkick. Dropkick Ragnarok. Here we go. Bippity. Blappity. That's what I call a turn one. Boop. No prob. Score a bag of prep. Another very good relic here. Draw two cards on turn one. We're offered a real signature move, although I think we have enough attacks in the deck. Also, Dead Branch might randomly make attacks. I think it's very hard to use this card. Blocking the path with the Prime Sub in the three months. Do I like multiple copies of Cut Through Fate because the Watcher doesn't have a lot of card draw options? In part, yeah. It helps Watchers spend a lot of energy while also doing damage. And each Cut Through Fate is worth more than one draw because it also has that attached scry. Could take a second halt here. Honestly, I don't think we need any of these cards. Skip them all, please. And let's upgrade, I think, Consecrate now for three more damage to every enemy. We could also start to upgrade these Cut Through Fates if we wanted to. I think we'll do that in Act 2. But yeah, very absurd run. I mean, out of Act 1, we have six upgraded cards, five very useful relics, basically at full health. Life's pretty good. The only thing that's not good is our shop removal price at 125. And that's still not really a problem. Beam cell, sure. I like vulnerable. I also like having even more cut through fates than before. Cut through fates for everyone. So we want to get Gremlin, er, not Gremlin, Slime Boss to as close to tw uh, 75 hit points as possible. This will add 8 damage to something. So if we go fast and Consecrate, we deal 18, bring him to 80. That means Fasting Cut Through Fade should be 22. 14 plus 8, 22, 98 minus 22 is 76, which is as good as it gets. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, 98 minus 22 is in fact 76. Could also just split now, right? We can do fasting, cut through fate, consecrate, consecrate. That's pretty dang good, actually. But I feel like we might be able to do better next turn. Oh, we also get the weave? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just go. Forgot about the weave. Blapped. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at those cards. Those are green. Vault's actually not that good with... Or with uh, or we don't have Vault here, excuse me. We have Omniscience and Scrawl, not Vault. Scrawl sounds pretty good. Scrawl's going to help us... If we get more uh, Prostrate cards, Scrawl's going to help us go Divine really quickly. Although Omniscience can do its own thing. Kind of hard to afford the Omniscience, though. I think we take the Scrawl. We draw a bunch of... Until our hand is full. It also generates one more card from the Dead Branch, but I believe that must always go to the discard pile because of how Scrawl works as a card. Still seems fine. Value a block pot over a dex pot, usually. Somebody was asking about the Snekawai. Here it is. Two additional cards each turn. Start combat confused. Would be a lot better had I taken Omniscience or something. As it stands, we have Fasting and a bunch of low-cost cards. We really don't want a Snekowai. But I am definitely down for Black Star. More relics from Elites. I mean, we have no problem killing Elites, that's for sure. Although we would love more base energy because of the Fasting. There's also Tiny House, giving us a bit of money and a potentially upgraded skill, but 
I think Black Star is probably going to be the best here. <laughs> Means we get nothing now. You can only take Black Star if you're very strong in your current position. Which, let me tell you, we are. We are absolutely very strong, and we can easily defeat the Elites of Act 2 for now. So, heck, let's do it. I think we, uh, honestly, if you put us into the Act 2 boss fight against Champ right now, I think we'd have good odds of beating him. As it stands, what we want to do is take as many elite combats as possible this act. And I see a way to get three, not more than three, but three. Have to go through a gauntlet of regular combats first. Shouldn't be too bad. Bag of preparation plus boat thingy means we're safe in most combats. We draw a lot of cards turn one. We have free block on turn two. Assuming there's any enemies alive at the beginning of turn two, which is pretty unlikely. That means we'll score six relics this act, plus the one in the treasure chest, plus anything at the shop. That's a lot of relics. I like it. Yeah, like I said, if there's anything alive at the beginning of turn two... Oh, easy money. Ka-ching! Uh, let's actually do it this way. Yeah. To make 20 bucks. I could try to draw back to that, actually. Hmm. Let's see if I can do that. So we could have killed this man right now. But why do that? When I can choose the peaceful option. Take one damage to maybe land it. Seems worth it. We heal two at the beginning of, beginning of the next fight anyway, so there's no penalty here. Thanks for the money, hee hee. Bad empty body. We might want more stance swapping soon. I'll take this. Uh, Nirvana for block when you scry was actually not too bad either, now that, now that I think about it, with three cutthroat fates in the deck. Tantrum! <laughs> hey. <laughs> Wait a minute. So nice, I made it twice. Second halt. Evaluate's also pretty good because it creates an insight for Dead Branch. I think we have enough block for the moment. Do I take another halt? No. We need, an, we need another way into Wrath before this uh, halt is any good. Second halt, that is. Hello. See you are here to murder me on turn one. Well, guess what? I've learned how to block. Now what? That's right, you got nothing. That's what I thought. Prepare the bunkening. 33 damage cut through fate. That's all you need. Also, I block for 47. Wow. Sanctity can be quite good with a free upgrade and with uh, the other stuff we've got going on. It's card draw and block at the same time. We do want block cards because of the fasting. Rhythm Prism with 16 months. Gotta love the dead branch. Rotor Panda says, are your skills in or outside of combat more important? I assume you mean like the actual 
playing of the game, the decisions I make in the combat versus the decisions I make out of combat. The in-combat ones are, are very, very important. I don't think they get talked about quite as much by Spire streamers. The decisions are a little bit more abstract or sometimes just self-apparent. But the, the choice of which cards to play in what order can have a tremendous impact on your run. The deck building outside of that is a, a bit more theoretical, picking the, the best choice of which card to add. Um, but that too is is very 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 important. So if I don't know that I could possibly pick one over the other, they're they're both the two arms of mastering the spire, knowing how to how to play the deck that you created and how, knowing how to build the deck so that it can play correctly. You need them both. He who watches says, in my opinion, playing out fights better is the easiest way to climb ascensions. I think it is kind of required. If you if you mismanage your your resources in combat, you will you will get defeated by certain opponents pretty decisively. Z-Term says, compared to better players, I lose four to five health more per combat, and it adds up quickly to a loss at A20. Definitely. You will get chipped to death very much in Spire. Yeah, Slay the Streamer is a good demonstration of one over the other. I, I agree with that. I will take the Sanctity, but I'm, I'm kind of worried we're bloating the deck a bit. Oh boy, I can't possibly kill Chosen turn one, can I? No, we should just go aggro here. Dig deeper, my child. Scrawl. Yeah, I'm willing to just scroll now. Grand finale. Bird nerd turn one. Happy to lose two health here, actually. Um, this just kill. This just kills, right? Uh, we would do forty-five. Plus 36 plus a lot. Yeah, this just kills. Just gotta make sure I don't click end to turn by accident here. Thanks, Dead Branch. That was pretty decisive. There's Wrath cards. Indignation versus Tantrum. Pros and cons. Indignation is upgraded and, and can apply vulnerable. Tantrum scales ex exceedingly well with fasting. I'll take a Tantrum because it hits multiple times, and I can afford to upgrade it for the fourth hit. Just Lucky was not bad either, actually, but got way overshadowed by the other options. A re-perfected strike. This will deal 32 damage. I'm pretty sure we can kill this Parasite here. And we can always Stance Potion if this fails. I don't think it will. It might. This has to find Consecrate? Has to find Consecrate, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Don't really want to use a potion here. Actually, we're at 80% chance to find a potion. I think we just go Prostrate, Empty Body, Block Potion. That seems fine. Very high chance to get another potion here. This does not kill, though. Interesting. Why we're killing you first. That nonsense right there. Good fight. And yes, potion returns to us. 
Second Consecrate, Second Tantrum. I am down for another Consecrate because of the fasting. Let's take one more of those. We should be finished here. Would we take a Runic Pyramid here? I think that would result in a lot of hand clog that I don't think we could tolerate. This is one of the few situations where Pyramid would be quite bad. What I'd like most is more energy from the boss. Anything else is suboptimal. There are decks that can tolerate Runic Pyramid and Dead Branch together. I don't think this is one of them, though. Let's see what this looks like. Hmm. That's pretty good. Alpha. Cute. Can you find me a Wrath card? No. Fasting is here, huh? That makes me want a stance potion. Yeah, I think I'm going to stance potion into Wrath here. Let me do this. So we can actually full block if we want to. Let's do that. Of course. Forty-eight. Oh look, I blocked it. Easy. Take forty-two damage from one tantrum. And you're gone. Perfect elite fight. Very good sign. We get a mummified hand, which is excellent with Dead Branch. Every time we play a power card, a random card in our hand becomes at zero cost. Which includes fasting, but also any randomly generated powers we get. There's our second prostrate. Excellent. The more of those we can get, the better. We want to be able to get enough mantra to go divine which is 10, 10 mantra. I would now add a prey to this deck pretty happily. Let's upgrade Tantrum. Tantrum Plus becomes our best damage card once we've played the fasting, scaling our strength four times. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Damaru gives us one mantra at the start of every turn. And here's the third prostrate. Now we can enter Divinity. That's gonna generate enough energy to let us start to do silly things here. We can either add a Dark Shackles or we can remove an addition. It's also Crescendo as an option. Although I no longer value more Wrath entries because we have the much more important Divinity entry. I think what we, will, I think what we want to do is keep removing cards at this point. Get rid of Defend here. I also don't think that we need Rushdowns because we have so many other options for card draw. The Dead Branch, the Scrawl, the Cut Through Fates, and the Bag of Preparation mean we can basically always spend all our energy anyway. Hourglass, three damage per turn to every enemy. Eh. Vaguely useful, although I think it'll be pretty irrelevant. Let's skip this one. That way we can take something like a curse key from our boss. Rarely do I feel like we're so strong that I can just callously skip the hourglass, but I think that's the case here. Sure would have been nice in this fight. What do you got? Foreign influence. Sands of time for free. Sure. Not going to say no to that. Yeah, eruption strike would have killed a minion here. I guess I could do explosive potion. Eruption, strike, strike, sands of time. That looks pretty good. Mantras, we go Sanctity, Frostrate, Fasting, Tantrum deals 84 damage. And we get a Gremlin Horn from the Gremlin Leader, as well as a Bottled Skill, which could be Scrawl if we want it to be. 
Although I think actually Bottled Scrawl is kind of bad at the moment. Inner Peace is pretty good. Devotion gives us more Mantra and is a power. Actually, Devotion. Definitely Devotion. And I'm not actually sure I want Scrawl Bottled. Could Bottled Foreign Influence? That's okay. Why is Bottled Scrawl bad? Because at the start of combat, we have a lot of cards in our hand. Scrawl draws more cards the fewer you have in your hand, since it draws to a full hand. So Scrawl on turn one is going to draw fewer cards than it will at other times. Normally you could just play your cards and then play the Scrawl on turn one, but because of the dead branch, that's not really an option a lot of the time. It's the most devotion I've ever had in a deck. We've uh, we've hit it with Omniscience a few times to create, like, nine Mantra per turn or something. I think I will still take it. Let's bottle... Bottled Vigilance is reasonable, actually. Let's do that. Bottle my Energy Store, turn one. Good reason to upgrade it, I suppose. If you have an artifact when you play fasting, you don't get the debuff. And so we don't lose energy per turn now. Thanks, Core Surge. You've been a great help. All right, Snake Plant gets destroyed. Can add a wave of the hand whenever we gain block, apply two weak to all enemies. That's pretty good in a deck like this. This could be part of our late game block strategy in particular. Let's grab it the best weak card that Watcher has access to. Gain three strength on turn one. Or we can transform two cards, which is pretty good because of the Toxic Egg. If we transform into a skill, it gets upgraded. And I would, would love to transform one strike, one defend, I suppose. Sure, let's do it. Yeah, and if we get powers, the Mummy Hand benefits. And if we get attacks, then, well, they're actually pretty good. Flying Sleeve Consecrate is is fine here. Those are both quite good with the fasting, so I have no complaints about that. None whatsoever. Hmm. Decent Blessing of the Forge. We have Gremlin Horn. Yeah, let's just Blessing of the Forge here. So we can go Vigilance, Tantrum, Gut. Discard all of that, draw something else. Multiple Prostrates, you got it. That's a full block already. Do this. And guess what? I'm divine on turn one. Triple consecrate to the face. Got him. And agreed. Bummer. Meal ticket mall bank. That's a weird combo. We'll gain money until we go to the shop and spend money there, and we'll get a heal when we do that too. Wish Plus could let us get more money. Although I don't really have the energy for it. Very hard to play this card. Probably don't want it then. I think we skip. Uh, Wish is a card I've definitely come down on since playing a lot of Watcher. I think the card is often just outright unnecessary. It certainly feels like the case here. Are you? Sure. Let's 
So against the champ, we're looking to get Devotion Fasting in play. The rest should follow pretty easily from there. Once both of those things are down, we'll be able to deal a lot of damage with our attacks on Divinity turns. Play your game. Let's just do a lot of damage right now. Actually, I don't necessarily want to. Best damage card this turn is Tantrum. Let's just Tantrum Prostrate one time, so we go Divine next turn. Every time we go Divine, we get three additional energy, which is a big deal. Just hit him. Let's do this too. And we'll go divine again from our uh, stuff before champ can hit us. We can also just kill champ outright, I think. Not quite. Not quite. Face my wrath. No champ. Face mine. GG. Excellent champ fight. Here's some unmastered cards. Spirit Shield, scaling with a number of cards in hand, or Judgment, killing one low health enemy. I think Spirit Shield is the better fit for the current deck. We have no way to know which one we're more likely to see in the future. Spirit Shield, very good with a scrawl, very good with just lots of card draw off the dead branch, I think. So sure. Took me a Spirit Shield. Lose the next potion. And hopefully getting energy of some kind here. Yeah, Coffee Dripper, Cursed Key are both options for us. Uh, we skipped the Relic last act, which makes taking a Cursed Key very reasonable here. That said, I think Coffee Dripper is even easier. Anytime you've got Relics that can heal you, or if you're doing so well that you're not taking damage, Coffee Dripper can be spectacular, and that's certainly the case here. We have two hit points per combat with Blood Vial, 15 additional per shop. That makes Coffee Dripper pretty free for me. Should you always take Master Reality with Dead Branch? If you're making a lot of cards with the Dead Branch, it's going to be worth it, for sure. Wouldn't necessarily say always. Hard to say always about anything in Slay the Spire, though. Can Judgment kill the heart when it's damage capped? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Just don't get hit. Easy peasy. Shops are all early. Sorry, Mall Bank. Um, three elite maximum as before. Which means going to this shop. Yeah, it means going to this shop. Guaranteed. Now we either do these two or these two. And this one or this one. Okay, so we go to this store and we see what we do. Could skip that shop for the next one if we wanted to. Having four energy per turn is definitely going to make this deck a lot more effective. start murdering. So anyway, I started blapping. Oh, right. Um, shoot. Get him. Alright, good turn one. Anytime you can go divine turn one, that's usually pretty good. Now do we want to rush down for free? Sure. Sure we do. Huh. 
toolbox. Okay. Thinking ahead is unmastered. Although my odds of getting another thinking ahead are pretty low. Could also get 36 more gold if we go to a second shop if we want to. It's a fun option. Would we prefer thinking ahead minus? Yeah, we would actually. Let's just look at one more shop. None of this feels particularly amazing, although Pendib's okay. Collect is a good card with Dead Branch. And now it's time to spin the wheel. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Uh oh. You lose! You spot him readying a shiv. You slash at the crazy gremlin, but he is simply too quick. Gets you a few times with the crude shiv. The price has been paid. Classic. At least we'll heal at the shop, so no biggie, right? No big deal. Hmm. Blocking. Got him. Third eye scries for five. That's not too bad. Don't necessarily need more cards, though, at the moment. Most of the foundation of the deck is in place. Let's take an attack pot and hit the second shop here. Back to full health. Prismatic shard is here. Another devotion is here. Question card is here. Boot thingy is here too. Prismatic shard could certainly be fun. Not that many card rewards left, but could be fun. Actually lowers our chance of getting a second spirit shield though. I guess the question card would slightly improve our odds. Eh, it's reasonable. I don't think it's really worth it in terms of run winning to take this, but yeah, it does improve our odds of getting the thing. But if we buy the question card, then we can't afford Spirit Shield in the final shop. Bit awkward, actually. Could hold all of our money. I don't think that's quite the right choice. Could be, though. Down for either Devotion or maybe just Card Remove. Just Card Remove is fine. And then we do have enough money next shop. Yeah, let's just buy a Card Remove. Yes. All right. Draw me some cards. All right, divine next turn sounds good. Sunder. Bonk. This deck just does so very much damage. Three plus, Indig plus, Protect plus. No need for any of these.
Get the other rush down. Might as well. Might as well. And then I can empty body to Simmering Fury for next turn. Draw a ton of cards. That's probably worth it. It's likely to get me into Divinity, isn't it? It is. So we draw a full 10 cards next turn. Cool. Divinity next turn, please. You fool. This should just kill you. Got him. We get Shuriken for playing three attacks in one turn. We'll get strength. Now we're going to be doing an overwhelming amount of damage, as if we weren't already. I like Empty Mind. Draw three, exit stance. Sounds good to me. More ways out of Wrath are good for the late game here. The unceasing top, meanwhile, probably not going to do a whole lot. But at least it's trying, okay? Might as well. This enemy is sort of a test of our ability to consistently output. Make damage and block happen every turn without fail. The answer is definitely. Definitely do all that. There is no fear. Perfect. Staying in Wrath should be fine. Can we kill Transient with this deck? Maybe. I don't think we're quite there. reality. Yeah, I don't think we quite get to uh, kill here. Pretty close, though. Pretty dang close. And the amount of times we can enter Divinity here is truly absurd. Basically every turn, you can see. Oh. I speak too soon. If I use the attack potion, we get a kill here. Let's do it. Dead. Just cuz. Talk to the hand. Welcome back. You are most welcome here. Applies a debuff that says whenever you attack this enemy, gain block. Multi NG with 11 months. Thanks for the Prime sub. Almost to that full year. Made it to Ascension 16 on all characters since finding the stream almost a year ago. Best of luck on the final climb there. You're heckin' welcome. Plus 3,000 points for style. Even more dexterity. Sure, sure. No complaints here. This is the... Uh, one more event this way. Let's take one more event. One less combat. That's just how I'm feeling. Bonus treasure with Eternal Feather, which is a relic that is unlikely to do anything, since we're at full health already, but it will heal us, maybe. Repto. <laughs> oh no, poor Repto. Rip Reptomancer. Triple Prostrate, turn one, equals instantly divine, equals you dead.
maybe. Well, actually. Means I get all these powers in play, at least. Alright, good talk. Hmm. Have some weak. Beautiful. Your drop locket means we start combat in calm. Very good for our turn one. And Akabeko makes our first attack do a bit more damage. Also pretty good. Sprunzo with four months. You're heckin' welcome for the content. This run is nuts, man. This run is crazy. Your thoughts suddenly begin to feel very real. Fight a boss or upgrade all of our cards. Thing is, most of them are already upgraded. I think we could very reasonably take um, upgrade all here, but we might as well get yet more relics and more money. Why not? Note that we don't get offered 999 gold as an option because we're too far into the act. Only up to floor 40 can you see the money option in that event. Guardian is already at half HP. Easy peasy. Black. Who even cares about thorns? That's right. Get a prayer wheel. That's going to be one more card reward. Good talk. And uh, there it is, the second spirit shield. We chose correctly. Spirit shield, get in here. We have a mastery candidate. And we're quite likely to win the run. So I think we might have one more card crossed off the list here. Let's heck and go. All we have to do is get past the double spikers. But where, where, as they say, is our spiker solution? Where is it? Oh, it's double spirit shield. Good to talk. Uh, you do the most damage, I guess. We should probably kill the exploder first. Probably. Managed to weaken one of them. If only I hadn't skipped Hourglass, you know? Don't use Tantrum on the Spiker, but do use it on the Repulsor, actually. That's our spiker solution. And none of these. Probably none of these as well. Although, again, Nirvana is maybe a thing. I don't think we need it. Don't think so. Keep the current potions. We could take crush joints for vulnerable, although we already have... Um... Oh, I didn't take indignation. Never mind. 
Yeah, Crush Joints is okay. Honestly, I don't think we're going to need the Vulnerable because we do so much baseline damage. Uh, we're already going to be hitting the damage cap on the heart without using Crush Joints, so I don't think we actually want it. Because it would be overkill. There's a, a functional limit in this game of about 200 damage per turn, any more than that, and, well, you can't damage the heart beyond that. And most other enemies will die immediately if you do that much damage, so there's not much benefit to going beyond that. Marl Dog, thanks for 36 months. What a fine Tuesday it is. Fine, fine Tuesday. Did. More energy is great. Bottled Miracle looks good. There's the prey I said I wanted a while ago. Four Mantra, put an insight into the draw pile. Yes, to both of those things. Let's take this miracle. I'm gonna keep the weak potion as an emergency against heart. Angry Bavarian with nine months, finally born. Choose a way to born. Are you an evil baby or a good baby? B -b -b body slam. Let's take a go for the eyes here. Definitely play this. As well, Akabeko Consecrate, I guess. Vigilance, Miracle, Prey. Sure. Almost a kill. Multi-attack already, huh? Tricky, tricky. There's both of these, I guess. Here we are. Fifty-two. Oops. That's right. Sure. All generated cards will now be upgraded. Devaform, for example, which I will play. Seems pretty good. Seems pretty okay. I didn't think that through, did I? Hmm. No, I sure didn't. Okay, I'll use this. Lug, because I'm a fool. All right, there we go. Pro tip, don't be a fool. There we are. This gets played as well. Let's just go bananas right now. Bananas. Delicious bananas. Mantra next turn. I don't trust that. There we go. Put these in play. There we go. Excellent.
Bonk. You're dead, son. GG. Yeah, it's killing the Awakened One in one turn. That's plenty of damage. How long will it take us to kill the Time Eater if we go Divine on turn one? Start with this. Tim. There are some who call me Tim. Okay, pretty acceptable turn one. Let's just go... Vigilance? Or do I want to rush down here? Let's rush down. Easy, I can do both. Perfect. Take one. Oh no, we took a damage to a chat. Perfect run, ruined. Ruined, I tell you. Some weakness. Even more weakness, that seems a bit excessive. Double brilliance, let's go. You're below half health now, get wrecked. Nice debuff, nerd. Foolish. 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 Bonk. All right. Two bosses obliterated. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all these random cards? One and a half per turn, allegedly. You prime your stick. With Mantra, dealing 29-15. That's quite the score. Should we win win this run, we stand to master Spirit Shield. Don't think we can get two copies of any other card at this time. But we can try. I don't think there's any way to get a second violence at this point. Although it is a genuinely good card. Buy the waffle just to be healthy. If I buy two relics, I think we get a score bonus. Might do that. Sure, give me a waffle. Give me a whetstone. The scroll bar. And I'll take the... You know what? Give me a fire potion. Heck it. Probably not the best thing we could have done at the shop, but I don't think it matters much at this point. Just gonna be honest. I don't think it matters a whole lot. Uh, you first, actually. Alright, just draw a lot of cards, then. Excellent. Punch. Punch you. Boop. Punch you too. So rest in peace, those nerds. Go up to 79 max HP. We got an Aura Calcum, and do we want a Devaform for the heart fight? I think we do. 
This will give us tons of energy per turn to really outscale that fight in a dramatic fashion. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. With how much resistance they put up, you should really call them Spire Spear and Spire should Yield. Oof. Look at that. Turn one Devil Form. Doesn't get any better than that. Blah. Actually, maybe it does get better than that. <laughs> the Blockening. Um, that's bad. That's not the top card you want. Hmm. Could use it. Are some valuable things. You know what? Let's just do it. Yeah, because we can get uh, Devotion down. Turn one. That'll put us in Divinity next turn. That seems good. here. Bonk. Bonk. That's pretty good. Heart is weakened. We get block next turn. Can use this weak potion later if we want to. We're immune to frail as well. That's definitely good. Oh yeah, and we're divine. Don't forget. a convenient amount of damage. Thanks, Dead Branch. How about this turn, though? Yeah, that's a bit bad. A bit less good here. Well, I guess it could have been worse. Wow, that draw pile. Yikes. All right, well, it's what we have the health for. Pretty hard to do a perfect heart fight, even with a very strong deck. We have Unceasing Top, that's right. Well, I mean, we know what we're going to draw, though. <laughs> Let's go top. Hog. Discard, Ascender's Bane, and Wound. Draw Void. The power. I, I guess. 13 turns of weakness, though. And then, Divinity Time. Easy. Just gotta survive one more turn, essentially. Shouldn't be hard. I play another copy of Fasting here. A lot of block, unfortunately. There we go. That's a bit better. This now, I suppose. Take two. And we can kill on this turn. We have 14 strength, which means Tantrum does 51 times four. Bang. GG, Mr. Hart. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to follow on Twitch to watch the content live. Click the link in the description below.